Good evening. With the Ghana Learning Channel's News in Capsule for Wednesday, September 15, 2021, I am Kingsley Bryan. Here's a look at some of the top stories we will be covering this evening. We'll tell you first and foremost that close to 500 teachers showed up for the Teachers Welfare and Benefits launch. Minister of Education says this is a pleasing effort. Then, President Ali says Ghana committed to democracy. Ramparts of fragile democracy to be protected. Second dose Sputnik V could be taken later. Latest data suggests interval of 180 days also effective. Then, EU reaffirms commitment to democracy and will continue to support their international partners. Meanwhile, CARICOM maintains support of Guyana as border controversy comes to a boil once again. And in news from the region, AHF donates gene sequencer to UWI to benefit Caribbean region in COVID fight. And on the international scene, extinct woolly mammoth to be resurrected. The goal is not to clone the animal, says the scientists. And now for the news in detail. We'll tell you that close to 500 teachers on Wednesday showed up at the Arthur Chung Conference Center at Liliandal for the launch of the Ministry of Education's Teachers Welfare and Benefits Program. The program caters to active teachers in the school's system and provides supplementary benefits through vouchers, which can be redeemed at several locations or businesses throughout the country. We'll have more details for you in a subsequent report. Then, President Ali, on the occasion of the United Nations Declared Day of Democracy, September 15, released a statement to the very effect. The head of state, in his address, called for all measures to be taken to protect democracies. President Ali said, an open quote, the General Assembly of the United Nations has designated September 15 each year as International Day of Democracy. In proclaiming this day, the United Nations affirmed democracy as a universal value, one which is based on the freely expressed will of the people. End of quote. The president reaffirmed Ghana's commitment to the fight of democratic processes globally. He said, I affirm Ghana's steadfast commitment to democracy. We pledge on this International Day of Democracy 2021 to strengthen the ramparts which protect our fragile democracy the rule of law, the independence of the judiciary, freedom of expression, and constitutional rule. Democracy is predicated on respect for freedom and human rights, and respect for the will of the people through free and fair elections, held at periodic intervals. As the Caribbean Court of Justice has observed, elections that are free, fair, transparent, and accountable are the lifeblood of a true democracy. President Ali concluded that, Democracy requires all to be involved, religious leaders, civil society, and every citizen who value highly freedom and the ability to choose. All of us must ensure that democracy is safeguarded every day of our lives." End of quote. Then, Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony, during his daily COVID update on Tuesday, urged that in spite of the delays in getting the second dose Sputnik V vaccine, Persons should not be afraid to take the first dose or any other vaccine to protect themselves against COVID-19. The health minister informed that there is a worldwide shortage of the vaccine. However, he said, latest news from the Russian Direct Investment Fund states that persons who took the first dose Sputnik V will be protected for an even longer interval. Open quote. The Russian Direct Investment Fund had advised that you can prolong the interval between first and second dose up to 90 days. Now, there is more recent advice published by Reuters on the 9th of July. They are indicating that you can actually go up to 180 days. So that interval, a lot of people have taken their first dose would not have exhausted such a long interval. Dr. Anthony said this by this, the government is working to procure more second-dose vaccines for the approximately 80,000 persons that are waiting.
thus far. 337,030 adults of the adult population have taken their first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, and that represents 65.7% while 175,037 persons, or 34.1%, are now fully vaccinated against the disease. Another 18,862, averaging to 25.9% children between ages 12 to 17, have been administered the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. And Ambassador of the European Union to Guyana, Dr. Fernando Ponce Canto, as we affirm the EU's continued commitment to being a steadfast and outspoken supporter of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. The diplomat made the comments in his address commemorating International Day of Democracy on September 15. He further highlighted that free and fair elections, rule of law, good governance, human rights, and media freedom are building blocks to creating a space where every citizen feels free and empowered. The European Union is fully committed to supporting healthier, stronger, and more equal societies for all, where everyone is included, respected, protected, and empowered. Ambassador Pon Scanto stressed that the EU will continue supporting efforts by Guyana, Suriname, and other international partners towards consolidating and further developing democratic values, institutions, and processes. And the Caribbean community in reaffirming support for Guyana in its border controversy with Venezuela, has urged the Spanish-speaking country to participate in the judicial process before the International Court of Justice. This was revealed in a statement CARICOM released following its 16th emergency meeting, which was held on Monday, and which saw the participation of President Dr. Irfan Ali and team, as well as other heads of government. The statement noted that the body has taken note of the recent round of negotiations in Mexico that was mediated by Norway between representatives of the government of Venezuela and that country's opposition. That meeting was supposed to be a discussion about Venezuela's domestic politics with a number of other countries, including the Netherlands, Russia, Turkey, Norway, and Bolivia taking part. But instead, the two sides ratified partial agreements reinforcing Venezuela's illegal claim to the S.C. Cribo. Open quote. As concerns the latter, the Caribbean community reiterates its firm and unwavering support for the maintenance and preservation of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Guyana. It also reaffirms its support for the ongoing judicial process of the International Court of Justice that is intended to bring a peaceful and definitive end to the long-standing controversy between the two countries and urges Venezuela to participate in the process. The statement concluded. And now turn our attention to the world of sports. St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots face the St. Lucia Kings in the Hero Caribbean Premier League CPL 2021 finals, setting up a grand showdown between the two sides. In the end, the nail-biting finals was won by the Patriots, who were ably supported by the valiant batting efforts of Dominic Drakes. Drakes hit 48 of 24 balls not out, and this performance carried the Patriots to victory. The Kings batted first and posted 159 for 7 at Warner Park in St. Kitts a total that proved insufficient to restrain the Patriots from walking away with their maiden CPL title. And that story was extracted and modified from the newsroom. And in news from the region, this week, AIDS Healthcare Foundation, the AHF, the largest global AIDS organization, signed an agreement with the University of West Indies, St. Augustine campus, Trinidad and Tobago, to provide a gene sequencing analyzer and reagents to expand the capacity of the university to test for new and emerging variants of the coronavirus. This will improve the region's sequencing capacity and contribute to reducing testing turnaround times. Jamaica and many other countries in the region are now experiencing severe upsurges of COVID-19 caused by the Delta variant, with many hospitals exceeding capacity and others running out of oxygen. More recently, five cases of the Mu variant were also identified in St. Vincent. 
Dr. Kevin Harvey, the Caribbean Regional Director at AHF, in welcoming the agreement, noted that the machine is already on order and should be in place within the next two to three weeks. AHF has also previously provided similar support to Brazil, Uganda, Mexico, India, Argentina, and before the end of the year, will undertake similar initiatives in Nigeria, Peru, Ukraine, and Pakistan. AIDS Healthcare Foundation, the AHF, the largest global AIDS organization, currently provides medical care and or services to over 1.6 million individuals in 45 countries in the US, Africa, Latin America or Caribbean, the Asia Pacific region, and Eastern Europe. And that story was extracted and modified from Caribbean News Now. And on the international scene, bringing extinct creatures back to life is the lifeblood of science fiction. At its most tantalizing, think Jurassic Park and its stable of dinosaurs. Advances in genetics, however, are making resurrecting lost animals a tangible prospect. Scientists have already cloned endangered animals and can sequence DNA extracted from the bones and carcasses of long-dead extinct animals. Geneticists, led by Harvard Medical School George's Church, aim to bring the woolly mammoth, which disappeared 4,000 years ago, back to life, imagining a future where the Tusk Ice Age giant is restored to its natural habitat. The efforts got a major boost on Monday, with the announcement of a $15 million investment. Proponents say bringing back the mammoth in an altered form could help restore the fragile Arctic tundra ecosystem, combat the climate crisis, and preserve the endangered Asian elephant, to whom the woolly mammoth is closely related. However, it's a bold plan fraught with ethical issues. The goal isn't to clone a mammoth. The DNA that scientists have managed to extract from woolly mammoth remains frozen in permafrost, is far too fragmented and degraded. But to create, through genetic engineering, a living walking elephant mammoth hybrid that would be visually indistinguishable from its extinct forerunner. The new investment and in focus brought by Lamb and his investors marks a major step forward. The Robert Winthorpe Professor of Geneticics at the medical school said, Church has been at the cutting edge of genomics, including the use of CRISPR, the revolutionary gene editing tool that has been described as rewriting the code of life to alter the characteristics of living species. His work, creating pigs whose organs are compatible with the human body, means a kidney for a patient in desperate need of a transplant might one day come from a swine. And that story was extracted and modified from CNN. And that's our news broadcast for Wednesday, September 15, 2021. Please join us for a rebroadcast tomorrow morning. On behalf of myself and technical teams, thanks for watching. Please stay tuned for our regular programming. And remember to observe all the necessary precautionary methods to fight off COVID-19. We're all in this together. Good evening. Mm -hmm.